Welcome to Wake Up and Live with Christopher Flake. This is a daily podcast to encourage and inspire godly living. Let's join in and listen to today's message. Good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in again today for Wake Up and Live. I'm excited as we're Friday and we're heading into the weekend. And so today we're just kind of wrapping everything up on this series. We've been just talking about the war against enemy and and just really about how to live this life without settling. And and if I were to cultivate everything up into the one last thing, it would be this. Be ready when you get there. Don't make the mistake of living your life waiting for good things to happen. Make good things happen. Be faithful in the small things that do not matter to you as much as treat them with the same level and respect and importance as the big things connected to your hopes and dreams. Remember that Jesus laid out this principle for us. It is the person who is faithful in the small things who will be entrusted with the bigger things. So many of us are trying to get there, wherever there is or might be, but when we get there, we're not ready for it. If we take shortcuts, we're gonna get there before we're ready. Whatever God has planned, we need to get prepared for it. When we finally get there, we need to be ready. We need to be ready for those unsuspected moments when we're called to elevate, those moments that much bigger than what we can hardly, we can hardly breathe. We must be battle ready. The great tragedy would be to live your life waiting for that moment to come instead of living the life preparing for when the moment comes. In God's economy, nothing is wasted. Everything you do today that seems insignificant will find its significance. You should never say, see any task is too small for you. If small is what you are entrusted with, that is your stewardship. You know, striking the last arrow is not only about seizing every opportunity, it's also about being the right person at the right moment. The moment requires action or even reaction. Those moments and actions are informed and fueled by who we are. The best way to ensure that you will seize every opportunity is to be the best expression of who you are. Too many of us spend far too much time trying to maximize the opportunities around us and, and too little time committed to maximizing the potential that's within us. What have I have seen over a lifetime is that from our perception, we wonder why God hasn't given us the opportunities we long for. And from his perception, he wonders why we close to be unprepared for the opportunities he's placed right in front of us. Failure is rarely about the challenges we face. Rather, it is about the lack of preparation. You cannot know every challenge you will face, but you can know who you are when you face those challenges. You know, I'm not sure what Elijah saw in Elisha, why he chose him above any other. Scriptures doesn't tell us what Elijah knew about him or what he saw in him. All we learn of Elisha is how he responded when opportunity came. When Elijah called him, Elijah followed. When Elijah tried to leave him behind, Elijah refused. When they stood alone after they had crossed the Jordan, Elisha had the audacity to ask Elijah for a double portion of his spirit. Even Elijah wasn't sure if it was possible. As powerful as Elijah was, Elisha proved to be all the more. What we know about Elijah is the moment that never seemed to be too big for him. He never stumbled into the future. He never had the uncomfortable uncertainty of being unprepared. Whatever else God might do or whatever else would come Elijah's way, the one thing that Elijah seemed to make sure was is that he'd show up prepared. Every time he got there, he was ready. Maybe that explains his anger toward the king when he struck the arrow only three times. There were some of those last words that Elijah, before he died, take the arrow, strike the ground. And the king, of course, struck it three times and stopped. And it it seemed incredible to Elijah that the king would stop. Why would anyone stop before God commands it? Why would anyone settle for a partial victory? Why would anyone else settle for less? Why wouldn't you just strike it and strike it until there are no arrows left? It is not incidental that Elijah died immediately after this defining moment. The king would live knowing he settled for less, and Elijah would die knowing he never settled. 
This man, this is a man who died leaving nothing undone. Yet it is a particular side note that says that long after Elijah was buried, the Moabites raiders would invade the land and every spring on a particular day. Somehow Israelites were burying a friend when suddenly they saw the band of raiders. So they threw the man's body into Elijah's tomb. When the body touched Elijah's bone, we're told that the man came to life and stood up on his feet. I think this is not so subtle reminder that if you truly live before you die, your life will have the power that not even death can conquer. There are some of us with two feet planted squarely on the ground. We're alive, so to speak, but to be near us brings death and disappointment. Better to be like Elijah, who in the physical death was still bringing life. So what will you do? What will you choose? Will you settle for less than what God has intended for you? Or will you just keep striking the arrow until there is nothing left of you to give? Until you have given everything you have and everything you are. And you know what? When it's all said and done, you've died with your quiver empty. You know, while Jesus hung on the cross in the final minutes of his life, he uttered one word that has been translated into three. It is finished. There is no more profound example of a man who left nothing undone, who held nothing back, who gave everything of himself and gave himself completely. Though it was a tragic death, there is something strangely beautiful about that moment. Being able to whisper with your last breath, one word, that, one word that lets the world know you did exactly what you were born to do. In that moment, death has no power. Death has no victory. There is no regrets, only a deep sense of fulfillment. And I am convinced that when we live out our lives connected to the one who gave his life for us, when we live fiercely and courageously without reservation, we will come to the end of our lives with our last breath too. And we will be able to say, mission completed. And perhaps in that moment, we will hear Jesus whisper in the depths of our souls, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, the way to ride is to throw us, throw your body at the mark where your arrows are spent. And I agree wholeheartedly, except I would add one particular nuance, that the way to live is to throw your body, your body at the mark when your arrows are spent. May we all stand on the battlefield, charging fearlessly toward the enemy lines, knowing that when it's all said and done, we struck our last arrow. For though I may not know you personally, this I know for certain. There are great battles ahead of you. There are dragons to slay and giants to bring down. And while you may not know what battles you are yet to face, there is one thing you can know, that you are battle ready that you are prepared for the great fight, that you are there with no option, you will shoot every arrow, and when your bow is done, you will take the last arrow in your hand, and with your last breath and all your strength left within you, you will strike, you will strike, and you will strike. And if we can get that in our spirit and in our soul, guess what? The victory will be yours. The blessing will be yours. So today I leave you with this. Don't leave anything for happenstance. Don't leave anything undone. Be prepared for the things that God has for you. So when you get there, wherever there may be for you, when you're there, you're battle ready. You're prepared to shoot every arrow. You're prepared to strike every moment. And you're there to claim every victory that God has already laid out for you. So today, I just leave you with this short and hopefully as we've talked over there, you go back and listen to the messages that we've talked over the last couple weeks and you would be the person that would war against the average, the enemy of average and war against it and you would place yourself in the opportunities that God has for you. So wake up and live empowered, blessed and loved by God so that you can finish the race and hear those great words, well done, good Good and faithful servant. God bless. Have a great weekend. You know, tune in tomorrow for some awesome worship. And on Sundays, we continue to look at the season of listening. And as Jesus speaks to us, as we're going to hopefully tie that up on Sunday. And again, thank you for taking any opportunity to listen to this podcast. I appreciate it. Make sure you share it on your social media. Let's get the word of God out there and encourage other people for the same blessings that you receive. 
Amen. God bless. Have a great weekend. Thank you for tuning in today for Wake Up and Live. Join us each day for a new inspiring message. Also check out our Saturday morning's Word and Worship for 30 minutes of getting refueled. Plus our Sunday sermon series on the seasons of life. 